Whenever artist Lisa Greenleaf sits down to sketch in her Nashua studio, she's never more than a glance away from the tree. I look at it every single day and I'm thinking, that tree is me. That's me. Lisa drew the detailed tree when she was just 14 years old. I remember sitting in my dad's chair with this drawing board that I still have, and I just started at the roots, and I just let it grow and grow, and all these branches came out, never knowing, never knowing where it was going to end up. And now here she is, an award-winning illustrator working on her 30th book. I look at each book in a children's book or any book that I do, it is a work of art. Each page has its own identity. In her latest project, she brings to life Puddles of Windrush Farm, a true story by Molly Avisis, due out this fall. It's about a duck named Puddles, adopted by a farm family. Lisa's halfway through the 32 illustrations, pictures meant to tell a story words cannot show. When I see the words, they're magic to me. And I hear what the author is saying, but I seem to dive a little deeper and really peel back the layers. Before Lisa even picks up a pencil, she researches the story and then heads on location, photographs scenes for the book. For Puddles, that meant visiting Windrush Farm in North Andover, Massachusetts. I take a lot of photographs so that I can understand um, how I'm gonna put the, the imagery together. I'll see a scene and I'm like, that's it. She uses the story's real life characters to recreate moments. For this scene, Lisa asks Farmer Roland to act like Puddles is dashing over his head. When I was taking the photograph, I was like, okay, Roland, Puddles is not above you right now, but I need you to act surprised. So I was like, what I need you to do is pretend Puddles is flying over and you, you're gonna have the surprise look. So one of the images, he's like, huh, like this. All the photographs are culled together in a collage, and then the artistry begins. For me, I love this part, the part where I, it's all sketched out, I get my color pencils, I'm in my studio, my favorite time to draw is in the morning. Lisa's life wasn't always a rosy picture. As a kid in school, she struggled. When I was a child, um, I was told at an early age I couldn't read or write, and I wouldn't amount to anything, and I was actually a special needs student. She became withdrawn, immersing herself in art. I kept it to myself because I felt like, even as a child, I didn't want anybody to criticize what I was drawing or what I was painting. It was during this tumultuous time that Lisa penciled her elaborate tree. That tree represents my past, present, and future. Like it's all of me. It's all of the foundation that I've developed in my life to help me stand strong in who I am and believe in myself. And then those branches represent all that I do in this lifetime. For years, Lisa hid behind her art, both in school at Keene State College and professionally as an artist and graphic designer. But in 2008, well into her career, she went out on a limb, fulfilling an enduring dream. Lisa brought to life the words of her ancestor, the famous 19th century poet and abolitionist, John Greenleaf Whittier, adapting and illustrating his poem, The Barefoot Boy. I stumbled upon The Barefoot Boy because I remember my dad reciting it. Blessings on the little man, barefoot boy of cheeks of tan. Lisa traces her lineage to Whittier's grandmother, Sarah Greenleaf. The poet kept esteemed company. Abraham Lincoln is said to have read some of Whittier's poems to the troops, and Mark Twain spoke at his 70th birthday. Never in my wildest dreams did I ever think that I would be able to take one of his stories and bring it to fruition. Never. 27 illustrations accompany Whittier's poem, a nod to his summer days as an innocent young barefoot boy. His birthplace in Haverhill, Massachusetts, served as the backdrop for scenes in the book. This is the, the exact wall he um, sat on. Um, it has, they've repaired it, but this is exactly where he would sit and fish. 
And so I wanted the story to start here. A young model helped Lisa capture bygone scenes around the farm. Summertime rituals from picking berries to climbing trees. She added a few personal touches too. My mother used to ride horses and she owned a horse. And I said to my mom, I'm like, do you have a picture that I could look at your horse shorty? And I want to add that horse in there. She dedicates the book to little Lisa, her way of letting you know dreams do come true. I remember when I finally got the book in the mail and I got my copy, I literally put it under my pillow and slept with it because I was so proud of myself. I was like, you did it. And perhaps now it's time to add to the tree. Pencil in some new growth, colorful buds blossoming, just like the artist. Mm -hmm.